So you, somebody will say, hey, what happened at your school this morning? There was a big ruckus. You know what a ruckus is? A lot of noise. A lot of noise, yeah. Exactly. Might be something else too, but... So they say, what happened in your, in your schoolroom this morning? There was a big ruckus. And you say, whatever happened, right? The teacher threw a fit. <laughs> you have a teacher who ever throws a fit? No. No, teachers are always... Now listen. You know, just because you fell down and your arm is hanging there by a thread, we don't have to worry because we'll take care of it, won't we? And what are you saying? Ah! Anyway, just a little comment about teachers. I'm going to show you a picture. You're going to pass it around, okay? But you don't hold on to it too long. So you see what's happening in the picture, and then you're going to witness to me, okay? All right, start here. Okay, you got it. Look and see what's happening there. Then pass it around. Can you see it okay, Corey? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Take a look and see what's happening there and picture all the people. Get up the picture in your head now. See, these folks out here are thinking, what is that picture? The picture I'm showing them is Norman Rockwell's One of the Four Freedoms. This is the Freedom from Fear picture. And I know that all of you remember all the Norman Rockwell Four Freedoms. What are the other freedoms? Freedom of speech. Freedom of, speech. Freedom of Thank you for playing. <laughs> you do not go on to the next level, Paula. <laughs> Freedom of religion. Freedom of speech. Freedom from hunger. Very good. Got it? Did you see it long enough? Okay. All right. Now you witness to me. What was the picture about, Fiona? Mom and dad tucking in their kids. Lucas, what else did you see in that picture? They were sick? How, did you, how could you tell they were sick? Because they're laying down? Lucas is the only one of the kids who sleeps standing up, I guess. Is that right, Andy? No, they're not lying down. I mean, they're laying down not because they're sick, but they're going to sleep. The little boy is the little boy who's facing you. The one closest to you. Is he asleep or still awake? Still awake? No, he's asleep. What was, what was the father holding in his hand? A card? A newspaper? A book? Corey? <laughs> Kids got the right angle. They could see everything. What else? Who says he was holding a book? How many? How many say he was holding a newspaper? How many say he was holding a card? Well, he was holding a newspaper. That's pretty good. Let me see what else can I ask you. What was on the floor? A doll. A doll, very good. There was something else on the floor, too. Looks like clothes. Clothes on the floor of a child's room? <laughs> that never happens, does it? It always happens? Hey, listen. Let me get you to rat on your parents. Are there clothes on the floor in your parents' bedroom? Oh. And they'll, and they'll come in and tell you to clean up your clothes off the floor, right? They have to do it too, yeah. Okay. It's their laundry? Okay. Could, do you remember the faces of the mom and dad real well? Okay, can you say something about their faces? The mom is definitely a girl, yeah? That's, that's a kind of important part of it. His face is worn, yeah. He's not dirty, but he's got a, a, a wrinkled face. Mom was wearing a black shirt. Very good. Dad's hair was thinning. Dad's hair was thinning? Oh, what do you mean? 
It was what? What do you say it is? Like he's almost bald. Oh, like it's uh, he's almost bald. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some of us really don't have to worry about that. But um, at any rate, and what color shirt was the dad wearing? White. Did you notice anything else about what he was wearing? I think it was overalls. No, they looked like overalls. That was good, though. What was it, Jacob? He was wearing a tie. He was wearing a tie. Yes, he was. Very good. One more thing he was wearing. Could you get that? You guys are doing very well. Of course he's wearing pants. Black pants. He had something else over his shirt. Suspenders. That's right. Okay. You guys did very well. So if somebody came in and said, hey, what happened over there at that people's house over there? You could tell them we saw the mom and dad tucking them in bed. Now. If that was your house, now picture if this is your house and your mom and dad are tucking you in bed, would you be able to tell more about the picture? Yeah. yeah. Why? Because Because it's happening to you. But also there's other reasons too. Do you know what color your bedroom is? Yeah. You don't have to go in and look every day and say, gee, what color is my bedroom? Or what's hanging on my walls? Do you know what your mom looks like? You know what your dad looks like? You know what your grandparents look like? So if you saw a picture of them, you wouldn't say, gee, now who is this? This is, if they were younger, then you wouldn't recognize them? Because they've gotten so old now? No Easter basket for you. <laughs> the reason you would know more, too, one of the main reasons you would know more is because you love them and they love you. So you would see things about them and you would see, you can tell, the, when you can tell the picture on your mom's face or your dad's face when they're happy, when they're sad, when they're angry, when they seem worried about something, you know that, don't you? You can look at their face and you understand. And so you would be a much better witness with the people you love. Now the Easter story is mostly about Jesus rising from the grave. Jesus was in the tomb, God gave him new life, and Jesus is alive again. But another big part of the story is that there were all these witnesses who saw him. And they went back and they told other people. And the witnesses were the disciples. Did the, did the disciples love Jesus? They spent three years with him following him, listening to him, getting teaching from him, and all these things. So they saw all this, and they knew what was happening. And they saw Jesus' face, and they saw his hands, and all these other things. And because they loved him, they gave a pretty accurate report to everybody else. And people would say, what do you mean he's not in the tomb anymore? And they would say, well, this is what I saw. And the story today that we're going to read, Mary Magdalene sees him in the garden, and Jesus speaks to her. So could she possibly think it was somebody else? She, could she say, gee, I don't quite recognize you, especially after he spoke to her. And another thing he does is he says, he, uh, he calls her name. He says, Mary. Fiona, when somebody calls you by name, do you think they're friends of yours? Do they know you a little bit? Even love you maybe, right? You go into a store and you would get a cashier to, when you're buying something, you're buying a new shirt or something. The cashier doesn't say, oh, hi, Fiona, how are you today? Well, unless you buy shirts all the time, but probably not, right? Well, when you're a witness, that's what you do. You tell the story as you saw it. And you also tell the story with a lot of feeling and emotion, about, especially about people you love. And that's what the Easter story is really all about. It's about telling people about this person that we've learned to love through our faith. Now, some of you are singing, right? So those of you who are singing, you're going to stay right here and sing. And then those of you, if you're not singing, you can go back and sit with your